I'm Stuart Brabs, I'm the manager of Ayrshire Rivers Trust and uh, we're on the, the Mochlin Burn, also known as the Chalk River in Mochlin in Ayrshire and we've been doing some restoration work funded by the, the Wild Fisheries Fund and uh, we're just here to sort of illustrate the, the sort of work that we've been doing uh, which is aimed at restoring both salmon and trout populations to this burn because they have been lost over time. Um, there is great scope, great potential with this wee burn. Um, we're about a mile upstream of the river here and there's not many spawning burns in this area. So by restoring this, restoring function, restoring the form, uh, we hope to, to really kickstart a population here within the next couple of seasons. Uh, the burn suffered from it's suffered from straightening, it's suffered from pollution, and with the fund, we've installed fencing, excluded livestock, um, and we've done quite a distance of that. Uh, I'm guessing maybe one and a half kilometers of fencing and livestock exclusion now, uh, maybe more. And then we, we solved some of the other problems of massive erosion going on on it because of the, the overgrazing by uh, sheep and cows. Uh, so we've now got exclusion zones, we're going to replant them this winter because one of the other problems just upstream is there's not a tree to be seen on it and in Ayrshire we face big problems with water temperatures. Uh, I think many catchments are sort of unaware of, or many fishery biologists are perhaps unaware of the, the extent of the problem but here every year we're recording temperatures of nearly 26 or over 26 in some, some years. Uh, degree centigrade at peak summer months. So big, big problem for uh, salmon, salmon is survival. Um, so we're dealing with that. We're encouraging others to, to plant trees. We're planting a lot of trees. We actually grow a lot of trees of our own uh, at the Trust. So all these things gel together and we produce things like this. And it's through the support we can get from this fund that's made it possible because we couldn't fund it elsewhere. Uh, there just isn't enough funding available for us to do the, the extent of the work we've got facing as an airship. So we're very grateful for the fund. This is just one job we've done with them. We've done three now and it's been hugely successful. It's a game changer for us in many ways and, and we will bring fish back to this burn. I have no doubt about that. Going to be a success story and I hope we can follow this up in a year or two's time and show you what's achieved because this is, this is just the early stages. This is only two months done uh, and it will transform over the next two or three years and it will look a, a different place altogether. Here at the Mocklin Burn, um, some of the techniques we use, we've, we've reprofiled banking, shear bankings that were eroding. Uh, it's essential to somehow stabilise and stop the inputs of soil. In this particular location, a machine had been in just weeks before we came and done what I would say was considerable damage to the, the burn. So as part of the work we were doing, uh, we put the, the willow logs that you see along the far bank, the toe of the bank, they're staked in with willow stakes and they will grow, they will root and grow. The willow itself, it may root, I doubt it, it's probably too big, but uh, the stakes will grow. Um, but they'll hold th those logs in place and that gives a bit of strength to the bank. We've seeded the bank uh, where it was left just bare soil, so that's going to stabilise. And then in the near bank, um, we used a, a machine, an excavator. We regraded, reprofiled and took the steepness out of it. We put a coir membrane in there and seeded over the top of that with just a, a general grass seed mix suitable for for agriculture. And uh, at the toe of the bank, the toe of the bank's reinforced by brash and willow bundles, which are basically rubbish from uh, forestry or estate management, timber management. And we take that brash, we bundle it, we include willow into that, and we stake it in with willow stakes. And those willow stakes, again, will root. Some of the willow within the brash may root. Obviously the farmer's got a new fence here, he paid for this, this bit he paid for, uh, the fund is paid further upstream, but uh, he'll not want this fence hanging in a year or two's time, so getting the banks stable on this burn's quite important. Um, 
but that, this is how we do it. There's many techniques. We've pioneered some te techniques here in Ayrshire. Uh, things like willow mattresses that we incorporate into some jobs. We haven't done it here. But uh, if anybody needs any help with that, they can contact Ayrshire Rivers Trust. We're very happy to help uh, and give some advice on it. But we've got good experience and we've had some really good successes using these te techniques. And over on top of all that, we will plant uh, native hardwood trees this winter. Hi, my name's Struan Candlish. I'm a fisheries biologist with Ayers Rivers Trust and have been for almost 10 years now. And you're with us here on the Brock Lockburn in South Ayrshire. And this is a, a tributary of the River Doon catchment. And for all it's quite a small burn. It's one that's quite important for, for salmon and trout production and much of a stronghold for eels, European eels, um, from the Doon catchment as well. So this is a project that's been supported by the Wild uh, Fisheries Fund. Uh, and, and the Doon District Salmon Fishery Board and we've also got the support of two landowners here, one below the road here and one upstream of the road. Uh, so they've been very instrumental in allowing this, this work to happen and supporting it. And what does that work look like? Well, for us it's bringing shade and stability to the riverbanks through tree planting. We've got a lot of green engineering here as well. But principally it's excluding cattle and livestock uh, from the water course through fencing. Uh, fencing is always quite a difficult thing to, to fund and it's critical to protecting these watercourses. Uh, unfortunately, even when you've got a burn going across the field, it's a source of free drinking water, no maintenance, um, and that comes at the cost of the burn where you've got uh, saltation, you've got sediment enrichment, uh, fecal matter from animals, and that all really depresses water quality. And water quality is a thing that underpins your invertebrate communities, then your fish communities. And then the terrestrial ecology that comes around and about the watercourses. So that's our mammalian life, otters, um, bird life, kingfishers, herons. All these things really rely on good water quality uh, to support the, the ecosystem at large. So prior to the, these fences going in, quite a lot of this was bare, very trodden and poached. And in a higher water and rainfall, all that muck, all that silt and sediment just is washed into the burn. That uh, clogs up all what we call the interstitial spaces between the, the boulders and the, the cobbles and pebbles and binds it all together with silt, which is of no value to, to fish. So once the livestock are excluded, um, you could almost just walk away at that point and these banks start to heal themselves up, wild grasses start to recolonise, you've got flowers, you've got a variety of different uh, flora starts to regenerate. But we try and push that uh, along a little bit. We have, we've planted quite a number of trees through here from our, from our um, native stock. We grow a lot of trees on. We source seed locally in catchments, propagate it, and then that goes back out onto our river banks so that we know that if we plant an oak tree in this river bank, it's come from the river down catchment. So that local provenance is uh, maintained. And so getting these trees in, there's a hell of a lot of um, willow cuttings have gone into these banks just to try and bring root systems and stability and also cover because um, prior, prior to getting the fences in place everything was so grazed that there was no cover in stream for these fish really from overhanging vegetation from trees in stream woody debris all the things that make a, a burn good we're a long way from the trees that we planted last last winter from becoming in stream woody debris but in time these will come and when we look downstream from ourselves here we've got a lovely row of um, of alders and without putting the fence in those were getting eroded around they're more susceptible to falling over as the roots become exposed then so it's not just about planting things for the future it's protecting what's uh, what's there currently so whilst the driver for us is is the fish and the ecology of the the water course there's a lot of other big winds that can come from around the work that we've done here we're increasingly looking to try and improve things not just for fish but for terrestrial species as well. But this water course now from its uh, from where it meets the burn, the next burn downstream, is as protected as it can be from our perspective. The whole thing's fenced and uh, that's an incredibly valuable it's an incredibly valuable thing to have here is a, a burn that's you know fenced from top to bottom. There's not many in Ayrshire that are like that. 
ideally they would, they would all be like that and uh, if that was the case I think our fish population would be in much better standing. So it's these funds are incre incredibly valuable to the Trust. Um, this is our one of three projects that we've had with the Wild Fisheries uh, Fund and all of those projects have to some extent relied on, on fencing and tree planting. And they're so fundamental to, to, to protecting and supporting the ecology uh, here. You just can't overstate how important it is. I've got a 20 odd minute video on YouTube talking about just how valuable these things are, but the difficulties we have in getting them in place. So the funding from Salmon Scotland, which is administered through the Wild Fisheries Fund, is just incredibly important to trust like ourselves. Uh, these, these projects aren't huge, they sort of sit in the sort of 20, 25,000 pound region quite often, but I think the, the impact they have is sort of far bigger than the money that, uh, that they require. Atlantic salmon now are classified as an endangered species. If we're not doing this type of work here, it, and we don't have the support of funds like these, this work doesn't happen. Um, you know, everyone's hard pressed, money is very tight, and fencing it runs at 14, 15 pounds a metre. We've done about a kilometre's worth of fencing one way or another across all this stuff here. It's incredibly expensive. So, without these funds, these things don't happen. And, you know, our wild salmon are in uh, a much worse position um, without the funding.